High school means different things to different people. For some, it can be some of the best times of a young life. For others, it can be dramatic. For some, high school is an opportunity to meet new challenges, to learn, to grow, and to excel, while for others, it can be a challenge that seems insurmountable, and for any number of reasons. And those reasons are not necessarily based upon ability. Sometimes the barriers are circumstantial. For whatever reason an individual did not obtain their secondary school diploma, it can remain a goal that they return to achieve later in life, some out of necessity and some for personal fulfillment. Some come to adult education because life has thrown them a curveball and they need to change careers and therefore require upgrades in certain areas of their education. There are people who are working on getting their lives back on track after overcoming personal hardships. Many people left the education system early to become young parents and now they're in a position to complete their studies. Immigrants and refugees seek education to assist in their efforts to create a future for themselves and their families in their new home country. And others come to adult education because of their desire to never stop learning, because they just love knowledge, and because they're seeking social interaction and looking for common interests to share while meeting and interacting with new people. For whatever reason, the Northland Adult Learning Center and other less traditional secondary learning hubs operated by the Algoma District School Board provide free education to those who are motivated to learn. Today we pay a visit to faculty members at the Northland Adult Learning Centre to learn more about uh, the school itself, the people who work there, and the people who are benefiting from their studies in this unique educational setting. I'm Tim Murphy, this is On Point, and we'll be right back after this brief message. Welcome back to On Point. So now we are on location at the Northland Adult Learning Center, formerly SF House School, and I'm talking to the principal. Are you considering yourself a principal? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, by, that, by title, I guess I'm a principal. That's your title. You are the principal of the Northland Adult Learning Center, and there's two different programs that operate out of here. But ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul Caldbeck. Paul, thanks for inviting us into your school today. You've been here for how long now? Well, this is the end of my first year as the principal of these programs, so I'm still oh. relatively new. Well, that's exciting, though. Now, you have a, a very lengthy background in history with the Algoma District School Board. Can we talk a little bit about that, some of your past placements, how you started, where you started, Paul? Well, yes, yeah, so I've been with the uh, Algoma District School Board over 20 years. Uh, I, I first began uh, as a teacher at Cora Collegiate as an English teacher. Uh -huh. uh, Bo uh, and Bob Cole was uh, the principal at the time. Wow. And, uh, and uh, while we were at, uh, at Cora within the first few years, uh, myself and a small group of other teachers and Bob Cole uh, started to get the idea of the International Baccalaureate Program and over the course of the, the intervening years uh, put together an application package, made application to the International Baccalaureate Organization and eventually had the school accredited as an IB school uh, back in uh, the early 2000s. So uh, there was a lot of history there that began that program which is still running today quite successfully. Um, so from there I became um, uh, the coordinator of the IB program, the head of the English department. Uh, then in 2006 was, uh, was uh, uh, appointed by the board as a vice principal where, uh, and I was moved to Boateng Collegiate where mm -hmm. I uh, got to work with my, my first principal and mentor, Michael McCabe at Boateng. So we had several uh, fun-filled and uh, very productive years at Boateng. Um, and from Bawading, I was then uh, moved to White Pines. Okay. White Pines uh, was being run by Principal Mark Zorzit at the time. Yes. And again, Mark's a wonderful person, uh, very generous, big-hearted, and... and He's uh, a larger-than-life kind of guy, Mark. He is very larger than life, yeah. absolutely. So we had a lot, again, a lot of fun, did a lot of great things at White Pines, was there for several years, then accepted a role at the, uh, the uh, school board as a system administrator working on developing professional learning communities within our board. Wow. So I did that for several years uh, down at the board office under the direction of Superintendent Joe Maurice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, most recently uh, was moved to Cora Collegiate uh, where I worked with uh, Sergio Ayako, who's the principal there. A number of great vice principals including Shirley Perkins, mm -hmm. Jeff Giovinati, uh, Jennifer Barbo, 
and was there for four years up until uh, the end of last year when uh, the board then appointed me as principal of this uh, this and a number of other programs. Wow, that's, that's quite a, you've been all over the place. Now, when you and I first met, probably professionally speaking, you were at Cora, you were a vice principal, I believe, at the time, when we started working on um, the a project ABCD, is that, is that, is that a, the right timing? Yeah, it was right around that time that we started working on project ABCD, and I believe it was my first year at Cora that we, uh, we connected and started doing some planning, and that was a wonderful project. It it, uh, it was fantastic for the community and for our kids, and uh, you know it. Uh, it, it really, uh, it really was a, a kind of a key point for the board. Yeah, that was a, ABC stood for uh, Action for Building a Community That Is Drug Free, and it was very much a youth engagement program where we encouraged the youth to actually take ownership of the program and, and help us in their schools, uh, bringing education and awareness and safety initiatives, and we had a lot of fun doing that. It was uh, very worthwhile. Now that you're here, what, is there a different feel to this, in this building, in this um, educational environment than in, in past locations for you? Well, yes. So, so in this this uh, this role, we're dealing with adults, and so the uh, the 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 kind of vibe, the the, uh, the the culture is quite a bit different than being in a high school. You know, high schools are busy, busy places. Cora was in extremely busy places. There's always things going on, um, and um, these these places, uh, Northland Adult Learning Center. Is, is busy, but it's busy in a different way. We have a lot of people coming in and out. We, uh, we uh, work very hard to develop more community partnerships uh, that impact and, and positively impact our student body. Uh, we have a number of different goal paths for our adults, uh, depending on where they see themselves in, in you know, uh, two, six months, a year, several years. And so uh, it, it's quite a bit different in, in, uh, in that respect, but uh, it's very busy. Um, in this role, as opposed to my previous role at Cora, uh, at Cora I would be doing a lot with students, working with students, uh, helping students in terms of their attendance, um, working on them with uh, being successful in terms of credits, a number of different programs. I'd help coach different uh, different activities along with the teachers. And so it was very much uh, hands-on, very day-to-day. -day. In this role, it's much, much more uh, administrative in that I find myself dealing with ministries concerning funding, wow. opportunities, uh, you know, budget, the budget concerns, interacting and networking with other programs throughout the province. So it's quite a bit of a different role, but uh, although different, still very busy. And uh, speaking of funding, I, you, congratulations on the funding for these beautiful computers that apparently just arrived very recently, is that right? That's right. The Literacy and Basic Skills program uh, in January went through what they refer to as an, uh, an IT refresh. And so that was essentially an opportunity for LBS programs throughout the province to uh, take take uh, take uh, inventory of their uh, hardware in terms of both computers, printers, and, and anything IT related, and look to, to do upgrades. And so we upgraded uh, our sites, including Northland. Uh, Algoma District School Board was fortunate enough to receive over $100,000 in funding to upgrade those computers. Uh, that's very exciting. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to find out exactly what happens in this school, who uses these computers and how, and um, there's more than, there's two different really streams of education going on in this very building, so we'll discuss that a little bit right after this. So stay with us on point, talking to Paul Caldbeck, who is the principal of the Northland Adult Learning Centre. We'll be right back with more On Point. Welcome back to On Point. We are in the former SF Howe Elementary School, which has been completely repurposed. I love the fact that we've taken a building that was uh, no longer being used as a school and it's been transformed into almost what would amount to two schools in one. You've got two different sort of streams going on in this building. Let's talk a little bit about that. There's a credit program and a non-credit program. Can you address that, Paul? Yes, we have, uh, as, you, uh, as you mentioned, two streams. The first being the adult credit program, which which is the Sault Ste. Marie Adult Learning Center. And so what happens is for students who are looking to upgrade and achieve a high school diploma, 
uh, they would uh, they would uh, enter that program, the Sault Ste. Marie Adult Learning Centre. And that's a centre where we have uh, a number of different programs or uh, courses being offered. We offer courses in math, English core courses, also elective courses based on interest. And uh, it, it uh, allows for students to be able to complete high school diplomas if they're part way through, and then use that diploma to either go on to college or in some, some cases university, or to look for promotions based on having a high school diploma in their, their chosen field of work. So that's the first stream. Mm -hmm. The second stream is our non-credit program stream. The non-credit program stream includes what we refer to as our literacy and basic skills programs. That's LBS. LBS. And our English as a second language program, which is ESL. ESL, <laughs> exactly. And those, again, are adult programs. The literacy and basic skills program serves a, a wide range of, of needs for, for people in our communities, from providing them with improved literacy and numeracy skills, providing employability skills, providing computer skills, uh, and uh, serves a wide range of clientele, whether it be uh, students who are new to our community, who need to upgrade uh, uh, for their job, or who may need to uh, refresh your course prior to entering into the uh, credit program, the Sault Ste. Marie Adult Learning Center, um, as well as uh, seniors who come, who want to upgrade computer skills, upgrade uh, some of their other skills. So we, we, we really serve quite a wide range of, of needs and of uh, age groups and demographics within that program. Oh, I'm sorry, I was going to say, I was talking, I forget who I was speaking with, but did you recently have somebody attending this school who was over 80, almost 90 years old or something like that? Are you aware of that at all? Uh, I do know that we have uh, seniors who, who come here on a regular basis, and I know that uh, uh, we've had a few who have been over 80 years of old and, you know, they want to be able to email their grandchildren or right. great-grandchildren or, you know, be able to use technology. So they come here and, and we, we offer them crash <laughs> courses in, in how to email. Now, is this education free? It is free. Um, uh, the Literacy and Basic Skills Program is free. It's funded by the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skill Development. And so they fund, uh, they fund uh, the students that come here, the courses that are offered, and that's one of the great things that, the, uh, that we refer to them as MAISD, that uh, they do for us. And it allows for free education for seniors, for people just uh, new out of high school, for people looking to upgrade some of their skills. Um, when I attended the graduation ceremony, I was speaking to Aaron, who was your valedictorian this year, and um, I believe part of Aaron's story was he had worked in one field, and I, I think it might have been an injury, or for some reason he could no longer carry on in that career path, and therefore, in order to be able to change careers, he had to do some skill training and upgrading, and that's why he came to the Adult Learning Center. And his story is phenomenal. I mean, he's just, he, he basically just found a new path for his life at the age of, well, as an adult, I'm not going to say how old Aaron, Aaron, I'll spare you that intimate detail. But anyway, um, and then we had, I spoke to also to um, a young lady whose name was Diane, and Diane had not had a great experience her first time in high school. Unfortunately, she encountered some bullying, and she had some mental health issues that were her barriers, and so she was able to come back, and she's, not only has she graduated, she's going to continue to come back and take more classes. So there's a variety of reasons why people would choose to come to this school. Um, then uh, also, obviously, with the literacy programs and the English as a Second Language, we're talking about we have Syrian refugees who've been taking classes here, and we have other immigrants who've been arriving, and I think that's absolutely phenomenal because, obviously, we are trying to include these people into our community. We want them to be able to communicate with us. We want them to make Sault Ste. Marie their home and to stay here. So we're providing opportunity for them to get that education in English languages and English skills and then go into the workforce. Do you have a connection with community partners as far as job placement and, and work education and sort of thing? We have a number of connections. And uh, as you point out, we have a number of immigrants and refugees who, who come to us. Uh, and we, we are part 
part of the uh, local immigration partnership, which is run through the city. Uh, so we sit on that committee, and that's kind of the committee that runs point for all incoming refugees and immigrants, along with the Sioux Career and Community Centre, again, whom we, we work closely with in terms of providing language services and employability skills. And so we, we, we have a number, and that's one of the things that makes this site unique, is that culturally it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we looked for opportunities to celebrate that. So we'll have our ESL students get involved and you know periodically creating lunches and potlucks mm -hmm. and bringing some of their cultural dishes and allowing us to share and and so we do we really kind of celebrate that that culture and we also try to provide them not only with improved language skills but as they're going through uh, supplement that with uh, enhanced employability skills for them as well that I lo that's a great story I mean this is this is a really feel-good story how how do people get registered here Paul is there is there a process they need to go through how would they first reach out and contact you or the board for more information the the easiest way of course is to call here at Northland um, they can call uh, call the uh, the number here we have it, a website up that gives uh, information in terms of our phone number uh, nine four five seven one eight five. Uh, and they can just give us a call anytime and uh, we sit them down. In the case of ESL, we have uh, an, uh, an intake process that includes, you know, assessing them for where they're at at their language and wanting to, to help them and develop a plan that helps them to progress as quickly as they can in terms of language acquisition. We also uh, have different courses in, in, uh, that we offer and that we advertise through local media outlets and whatnot, such as computer classes. Uh, and um, so again, we have, there's uh, links through the board website, the ADSB website. We have uh, our own website, a uh, phone number, and uh, we will be doing promotions for these programs as we ha head into the fall season. And you're welcome to join me at on TV, we have mornings with Luann and Tim. So there's there's one you can come and visit us for a shorter interview and promote some of those programs as the fall approaches. And uh, maybe when we get back to the studio, I'm talking to Mike right now behind the camera. We can put a, the website information up and the phone numbers on the screen. So we'll try to lay that in to the interview when we go back uh, in at, what do you call that post production? Anyway, Paul, listen, I know you're busy. There a note came into you while just while we were filming, and you've got to go and take care of being a principal. And uh, I'm, you've thank you for setting up a couple more interviews. We're going to come back with a couple of the educators who work out of this building, the Northland Adult Learning Center, to talk about their experiences. And uh, I thank you again for your time. Enjoy your summer, sir. Thank you, Tim, very much for having us, and we appreciate it. And we'll see you in the closer to the fall when things get going again for you. Stay with us on point. We'll be right back, right back after this. Welcome back to On Point. I'm talking now with Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Welcome to On Point. Now, you and I were just talking. You went to Lakeway High School here in Sault Ste. Marie, yes? Yes, I did. Yes, and I went to St. Mary, so I used to walk by Lakeway all the time. I wonder if I ever saw you standing outside. <laughs> Possibly. Were you one of those kids who stood outside and smoked cigarettes on the corner? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, for me, when I went to high school, there were, I had certain teachers and I thought, well, if I were ever a teacher, I, I wouldn't teach that way. Did you learn your teaching skills sort of by not what to do from your experiences in high school? Possibly. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you go after high school? To Did you go away to university? Yes, I did. I went to Algoma University. Uh -huh. I did my degree there at the time. And then I ended up going overseas and I taught English in South Korea for for a year. Wow, okay. Now that's pretty, that's got to be a very cool experience, going over to a culture and a country you've never been to. You didn't speak the language, you didn't speak Korean? No, definitely not. No, and so, I mean, how you were young then, right? <laughs> definitely younger. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably easier when we're younger to go and do those things and throw ourselves into those situations because we're not smart enough to know that it, <laughs> that there are, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were there for about a year, and while you were teaching English as a second language there, did you start to think, oh, this is kind of cool, or did it ignite something inside of you? Or? It did, definitely. Um, it did ignite something, and I decided that's probably what I'm going to do when I return back to Canada. And you, and you did that. Then you went to U of T, is that right? I did. I went to U of T, and I... I got my TESOL certification through there. And, and TESOL is teaching, T-E-S-L, -E teach, teaching what? 
teaching English as a second language. That makes sense, TESOL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, now called OSALT, um, Ontario Certified English Language Teacher. Okay. Yeah. And then Toronto, did you come directly back to the Sioux from Toronto, or did you work in the system elsewhere first? No, I, yeah, when I was finished, I came back to the Sioux, mm -hmm. so I think that was in maybe 2000, maybe 2000. Oh. And then I ended up doing a, some supplying at Prince of Wales, where they had the English language program there. See, now we're really dating ourselves because Prince of Wales is no longer there. They tore it down. <laughs> yes, we are dating ourselves. <laughs> That's okay. We look good. Uh, so now, you're teaching in the Sioux, and then, but in the regular, you were supply teaching, you said? But it was through the, it was an English language program, so ah. the ESL program. Was, uh, uh, was that Prince, or, um, Prince of Wales? Prince of Wales. So now, here we are in the present. You're teaching English as a second language here at the Adult Learning Centre. Uh, when you were teaching at Prince of Wales, was it also adults then? At that? Adults, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, but you taught children before in the school system where you... No, oh, just ad adult ed. That's your, real, that's your real specialization. What is it about teaching adults that you think is so uh, uh, rewarding? Teaching <laughs> adults? It's, uh. Is I mean, about your job. What is it about your job that when you go home and you think, well, that was, I mean, sometimes you go home and you go, oh my gosh, that was a long day. But other times you must go home and go, wow, okay, that was a great day. What makes it a great day for you? Well, I guess because I'm meeting people from all over the world and they're lovely people. Um, they have a real interest in learning. So in that re regard, it probably makes my life a little bit easier because they do want to learn. Um, so they do do a lot of work and yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of laughs, and we've done some really interesting things with them. And now, Sault Ste. Marie, we've taken Syrian refugees in, and we have a large influx now of immigrants coming, many coming from India. Uh, there's a lot of kids that are studying at Sioux College and at Algoma U. We're, there's a big push on now for international students because we're trying to bring more youth to our city and populate our, this region more, have people come and settle here, raise families here, look for work here, get their education here. So uh, your experience now is with uh, many of the Syrian refugees are studying from you, correct? Yep. Many of them. <laughs> and how do you find, how is their transition going from your perspective? What are you seeing as, as they arrive here and the time that you spend with them? Uh, what's the experience like for you and for them? Um, it's been amazing. I've seen tons of growth, um, like even in their language learning, um, integrating into the community, being part of it. Um, Paul was talking about some of the things that you've done in the school as far as uh, having celebrations and sharing cultures and that sort of thing. Is that something you've been involved in as well? Oh, definitely. And that's, I guess that's one thing I, I love about teaching is not only do I teach them, but they teach me. And I've learned so much from my students throughout the year, just like history, cultural things, um, geography, different religions. Like I've learned a lot. I've grown as a person through them. And that's what it's all about, because education is a two-way street. I mean, I, I've always thought that a teacher who is open to learning from their students is the best kind of teacher out there, right? Because you've got to adapt the way you teach to the students that you're teaching, correct? Oh, yeah. And, and everybody learns at a different pace, and we all have, I mean, and you're teaching people, this is what I find really interesting, is that you're teaching people, sometimes you have mixed languages in your classroom, so some might come from Syria, some might come from India, and they're not speaking the same language at all, but they're trying to learn English together. It, that must be very unique. Oh, it's totally unique, and it's very interesting to watch, and they do it. And they do it, and then the, and the unifier then is being together in this school, right? Oh, definitely. So... I, I, I think it's got to be a great environment, very encouraging, it must be exciting, and um, what, what would you say is one of the greatest challenges? Is that a fair question? Can you think about something that, for yourself as a teacher, are there sp challenges that are specific to your job that, um, or? Yeah, yeah. Um, probably, maybe the biggest challenge I might have is multi-level classrooms sometimes. So you could have someone in the class maybe absolutely zero English and then you know someone who's a, like a CLB 8 or, so trying to work with that but we do have well we do have three teachers now so we are able to separate a little bit better oh. and we have absolutely amazing volunteers that come in and help and without them yeah it would be maybe a little bit more difficult. 
Well, but it sounds like you're having a, a, a very good time in your job. It sounds like you're getting great results. I mean, I saw the graduation the other day. That was a great ceremony. Were you, did you, were you able to go down there? Oh, yeah. We were there. My students were there, yeah. I saw them. It was a, And I saw them with their families. That was so, it was such a great thing to see all the families coming out to watch them graduate. So, well, listen, I want to shake your hand. Leslie Valcido, congratulations on the work you do in our community. Thank and uh, thanks, I, thanks for joining us on TV. Say hi to Chris from me. Well. And uh, stay. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be back. We're going to talk to Paul Soch and another educator here at the Northland Adult Learning Center. Our thanks to Leslie, and we'll be back right after this. Thanks for sticking around on point. See how I did that? Sticking around on point. I'm Tim Murphy, and this is Paul Sachin. Hi, Paul Sachin. Hi, Tim Murphy. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. Thanks for having me in. This is your classroom. Yes, sir. At the Northland Adult Learning Center. We already talked to Paul, the other Paul, the principal, and we talked to Leslie, who teaches English as a second language. What courses do you teach here? Uh, computer education, so all kinds of courses like uh, QuickBooks, for people who want to learn some accounting, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, um, even how to create your own website. Nope. Really? You did that here? Yeah, we could teach you. I don't know about that. I, I might have to go through the, started, the little starter courses first. Do you offer little starter courses? Well, th th they are. They're all basically starter courses. Okay, uh, then I qualify. Yeah, you do. Uh, I, you, what, what's your background? Where else did you teach before you came here? I've been teaching in the, uh, the high schools, uh, mostly tech courses, tech design, transportation, um, yearbook, that sort, of, yeah. that sort of thing. And um, I had a background in, in computers as well. So okay. this just kind of it was a, a nice, easy transition. And it's something I'm interested in. So that makes it not work. So you were in tr more traditional high schools in the past. You taught in your uh, other but, but yeah, traditional, I would say, high schools, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but now this uh, adult learning center, do you feel there must be a different feel to it? Uh, what's, what's that oh, transition like? It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, yeah. I'd say it's one of the best jobs I've ever had. No kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, um, well, everyone here, they're keen to learn. They, they're, ah. they're looking, they're focusing in saying, you know what, I put something off, or there's a specific need that I have, and this is a place they can come and, and hopefully find that. You know, I never really thought of it until you, I mean, Leslie said the sort of the same thing, but it didn't just register till just now that, absolutely, when you're teaching some kids in high school, the school is the last place they want to be. And that can be, that can be um, a little deflating, I think, sometimes as an educator, when you're trying, you're trying because you want the children to learn and grow and to take advantage of the opportunity of a good education. And some kids are just like, ah. You know, I don't care. Absolutely, yeah. But here they are. Just they're here because they want to be here because they want to learn, and that's got to be uplifting as an educator. Well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's it's for work, and they're they're actually going to work that afternoon. They get the, a morning off so that they can come in, learn a new skill, and then they go and they apply it right away. So it's it's great to see. Now, how long have you been with this at, at the Adult Learning Center? Uh, since November 2017. Oh, so this is pretty new for you. Very, very new. I wish I'd found it 10 years ago. Uh -huh, that's okay. The, your typical student or your average student, is there such a thing or are they come from everywhere for every reason? Oh, there's uh, all sorts of people. Like I said, some people who are currently working, some people are looking for work, um, pensioners who are, maybe they are just doing it for interest or with their Android and iPhone courses, they want to do FaceTime. They want to contact their, their kids and their grandkids and know how to use it easily. And they find it's, it's very easy to do in this group environment. They're not afraid to ask a question. So, um, Age range. What? Oh, we, um, one fellow, uh, I think was 84, he, was, he, he comes regularly. Um, for computer? A, to yeah, a former business owner who didn't have to use a computer in his business. He would, he would write some things down, hand it to the secretary, they'd do the stuff up. And he said he just wanted to, you know, get a better handle on it. And he has time now. And what about, uh, is there a crossover, Paul, from, because I know we were talking to Paul Caldbeck, Principal Caldbeck was talking about the sort of the, the dual streams in this school, because you do have the, the credit program and you have the non-credit program, like the English as a Second Language is a non-credit. Is there a crossover of students who, who do both? Absolutely, yeah. Once in a while, there'll be a student who is, uh, let's say they're doing English, 
and they decide, you know, wait, I need a little extra, you know, work with Microsoft Word, and they're mm -hmm. struggling with that. So they'll come in and they'll take the courses, and it's not long. It's uh, ranges from one week to two weeks, usually four to eight classes. So it's and it's uh, would be a morning or an afternoon. There's coffee breaks, mm -hmm. so it's it's really manageable, and they can pop in, pop out, um, go back, and even do some of their work in the class. You know, if we're if we're editing something, they can edit their work and then say, "Hey, I have a question about this." So. The other thing that I didn't touch on this with anybody else, but um, more the offsite stuff of the the online education. Does that that happen out of this bill? I mean, where, how does that work? Do, do you have much information on that? Am I asking the wrong person? I'm well, sorry. Well, it's okay. Um, we do have occasionally uh, some, I guess, some small parts where someone can do some work at home okay but uh it's more of the credit courses that actually have the online education ah. whereas we could the the microsoft online course for example that we teach mm -hmm. they're able to take and expand and use microsoft 365 at home because the school board provides it that's so, see yeah. it's, and that's the thing too uh, for we know that not every student learns at the same pace mm -hmm. not every student has the same uh, some students have different barriers and the great thing about I, I would imagine in in this kind of environment where you're working with adults you can really tailor the education you're providing the instruction you're providing to those students is that true yes yes definitely um, a lot of times we'll do our lesson and then later on, someone will say, but, you know, I have a question, like, about this. Why doesn't this work this way? And then we'll branch off onto, into a tangent. And someone else said, oh, I had the same question. I didn't know we could talk about that here. And so it's, it's very open. It's easy um, for people to just bring up whatever they need to, even if it's a specified course. So it's... And what about what about the success stories? Have you? I mean, you haven't been here long and that that long, but have you seen people actually come here and then be able to go out and and, and oh, achieve some goals? The the best thing that happened has happened so far. I think um, a student came, decided to do some upgrading to make sure that they're okay before they took some tests to get a job, and um, when they were writing the test, they said they remembered me saying, you know, you're either going to ace this or you'll have a little bit of difficulty, but you'll, you'll do it. You'll be fine. And he said that, like, he remembered those words. And I, like, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it, 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 um, it was just so affirming it's that you're making a difference, mm -hmm. that people are taking um, what they need and then applying it out in the world and bettering themselves. Thank you very much for uh, all that you do. Well, thank you. Well, you know what, though, because I know that you have a, I know you personally, and I know about your passion, and I know how much this means to you, and that you love your job, and, and I'm happy that you found this perfect fit for yourself, well, too, at this point you. in your career. And so, uh, thank you for joining us. I'll be back to wrap up in the studio, but my thanks to Paul Sachin, to Principal Kaldbeck, and to Leslie for... Uh, spending their time with us today and just talking a little bit from the educator's perspective about the Northland Adult Learning Center and all the fabulous stuff that goes on here. So stay with us. I'll be back with more On Point. At the graduation ceremony for the students from the Northland Adult Learning Center, Principal Paul Kaldbeck shared an anecdote that addressed the concept of not realizing one's full potential. While visiting in India, a tourist passed some elephants that were being held by only small ropes tied to their front leg. No chains, no cages. It was obvious that the elephants could at any time break away from the ropes they were tied to, but for some reason they did not. The tourist saw a trainer nearby and asked why these beautiful, magnificent animals just stood there and made no attempt to get away. Well, the trainer said, when they are very young and much smaller, we use the same size of rope to tie them, and at that age, it's enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The tourist was amazed. These animals could at any time break free from their bonds, but because they believed they couldn't, they were stuck right where they were. Like the elephants, how many of us go through life hanging on to a belief that we cannot do something simply because we failed at it once before? 
How many of us are being held back by old, outdated beliefs that no longer serve us? How many of us have avoided trying something new because of a limiting belief? Worse, how many of us are being held back by someone else's limiting beliefs? Whatever you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. Choose not to accept the false boundaries and limitations created by the past. As Principal Kaldbeck advised the graduating class, don't be an elephant. Thanks for joining me on Point. We'll see you again next time.